beloved one i hope you are doing well i want us to take a short reading from the book of psalms chapter 127 it says if god's grace doesn't help the builders they will labor in vain to build a house if god's mercy doesn't protect the city all the centuries will circle it in vain it's really a senseless to work so hard from morning till late at night toiling to make a living for fear of not having enough now god can provide i want you to see this it says god can provide for his devoted lovers even while they sleep now this tells us of the great things that we enjoy anytime we come into God's presence. It tells us of the blessings we enjoy anytime we are with God. And then we can do this through prayer, through the word of God, and even as we are about listening to this. So I want us to do something. We are going to like this video. So then please hit on the like button if you have not done so. This helps YouTube recommend this video out there to anyone so everyone can have access to it also by doing this you help in the spread of the gospel and of the good work of this channel then don't forget to leave a comment in that comment section hit on that subscribe button if you haven't done so and you are new here and then get on to the notification bell and do us the favor of tapping on it too you were blessed stay blessed that wind the scripture that came to me was Ezekiel 37 and he said prophesy to these books he said as I prophesied there was a sound there was a sound we'll sit down shortly for the word but I just want to honor that which the Lord had opened my eyes to see I saw a wind blowing and I want to stretch my hands because I'm seeing the number nine pastor please is it all right the number nine this is what I see in the spirit and the power of God is coming upon those people it's a strange restoration please I want you to bring them out right now in the name of Jesus I come with the rod of a higher priesthood I declare by the spirit you're being shifted to a new season in the spirit in the name of Jesus please bring them out I speak by the message of the God of David that your life will never be the same I send this word as a prophetic instruction in the spirit in the name of Jesus may that wind flow over the length and the breadth of this building and set you free in the name of Jesus Christ just a minute and we'll be seated. Let's just honor what the Lord is doing. Please bring them out. You will never, never be the same, I assure you. Shabro Satiba Shalakusiata. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ the Lord is asking me to prophesy speed please whether you are an usher or not hold them because they will start running physically the Bible says and the hand of the Lord came upon Elijah right now I stretch my hands and I declare that grace that delay you call it a restoration I speak by the voice of prophecy in the name of him who died and rose again that you are shifted to a new dimension in the spirit a new dimension in the name of Jesus you will never forget this conference for the rest of your life help this woman please bring them out but help this woman I stand in partnership with the grace upon this house and we declare by the spirit we open the prison doors and we declare by the voice of prophecy move forward make progress move forward advance by the spirit of grace Touch these.
Hallelujah. Listen. You see, when you come for conferences like this, like the man of God was sharing, it is important for you to understand that this is not just some religious activity conjured by men. This is an expression of a deep desire from your pastor and your father to see that truly you step into superior dimensions in the spirit where your life becomes a testament of his speakings. And I've only come tonight to lend my voice with your father and the grace upon this house to call the devil a liar even in this season and to decree and declare that truly the Bible says there is hope for a tree in the name of Jesus Christ and because you are that tree that is planted in the house of God the Bible declares that you must flourish in the courts of our God hallelujah for all those who have come out I stand in partnership with the grace in this house and in the name of Jesus that which needs to be corrected we correct now in the spirit that which needs to be taken out we take out now in the name of Jesus that which needs to be introduced, we introduce now in the name of Jesus. We decree and declare that the end comes to captivity. Receive, we grant it access to speak in your life here and now. And let Jesus be glorified in the name of Jesus Christ. God bless you. Please be seated if you can. Thank you, Jesus. Water you turn into wine. Open the eyes of the blind. There's no one like you. None like Into the darkness you shine And out of the ashes we rise There's no one like you None like you This is our testimony tonight That our God is greater God is stronger, Lord, you are higher than any. Our God is healer, awesome in power, our God. Help us, Holy Spirit, and let Jesus be glorified in the name of Jesus. Please be seated. The mystery of restoration. The mystery of restoration. Please just help those under the anointing. Just guide them so they don't injure themselves. And let's lend our attention even at this time. The Bible declares that the kingdom of God is a compendium of limitless possibilities. Scripture does not leave us in the dark as to the possibilities that can happen to a believer in Christ. Every once and again, the Bible would take out time to remind the inhabitants on earth that the God that we serve is a mighty God. And that he is mighty on the strength of his names, which are representations of his ability and his character. Please follow closely. According to scripture, every time God revealed a dimension of himself, that dimension was captured in a name and preserved for generations to come. So that if at any point you forgot that attribute of God, he would come through that name and remind you 
that this ability is also part of what makes me God. Are we together? So scattered all through scripture are the names of God, which are a representation of his ability, which are representations of the limitless possibilities that are in this kingdom. So the Bible does tell us that we are in a kingdom with limitless possibilities. Again, one of the things that from scripture we learn that God hates is idolatry because it's an attempt to bring him side by side to gods that do not match his ability. Are we together? Every time people demonstrated idolatry in scripture, they compelled the God of the heavens to react. And he did it in a way and a manner that made all and sundry within that dispensation to return back to the honor of the God of heaven. So the Bible is a compendium of God's manifesto. From Genesis through Revelations, we see the consistency of his love, his power, his majesty through dispensations. Whether it is the parting of the sea, whether it is in prophetic statements, parables, the workings of Jesus when he came as God manifest in the flesh. All this is to the end that the saints understand that the God that we serve is unlimited. It's not just, it's not just a religious understanding that he truly is limit, unlimited. Are we together? But then the Bible also lets us know, please look up, that the work of the believer in Christ the quality of the believer's work in this kingdom is not only dependent on the love of God, but is dependent on our understanding the systemic character of the kingdom. That God is a God of systems and that the quality of my life and your life will not necessarily be a reflection of his love for us. Are we together? But our understanding of what Moses would call the ways of God. So the depth and the degree to which I comprehend the ways of God will culminate to the extent of my victory in this kingdom experientially. Now for many believers the challenge is that we have an awareness of the possibilities that are captured in scripture. The average believer can tell you the possibilities that are in scripture. The average believer even if he does not know he will not it when he hears it. The challenge most times is understanding the dynamics that cause the word to become flesh. The Bible says, and the word became flesh, and then it dwelt among us, and then we beheld. We couldn't behold what was locked up in the realm of the spirit. It had to gain entrance into our realm. So for as long as our profession of the faith remains just as a verbal communication or a wish locked up in the realm of the spirit, frustration will be imminent we must sustain the spiritual technology to translate realities that have been captured as written in scripture to make it become our experience here and now hallelujah so the bible shows us through stories through prophecies through illustrations that for instance favor is a possibility with the saints in this kingdom. Are we together? If you are not in this kingdom, you cannot understand these workings because they are called mysteries. A mystery is a hidden body of truth that is privy to a group of people. Like the military have their lingua franca. If you're a military person, they can speak. It's a hidden code of operation. You have to be trained to understand what they are saying. So in the kingdom, we have a system of operation built by God's own intelligence. That if the saints access that body of truth, the Bible calls it marvelous light. We are not just a chosen generation and a royal priesthood just because we happen to be at a time in history alone. But that God has granted us access to a hidden body of truth that the Bible calls marvelous light. And it is on the strength of that light that our lives show in experience that we are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and indeed a peculiar people. Are we still together? So scattered through scripture we see that favor is a reality. We saw it in the life of the nation of Israel. 
scattered through scripture we see that speed is a possibility scattered through scripture we see that restoration is a possibility scattered through scripture we see that all these dimensions are there so that listen the bible says the things that are written at four time he says that they are for our learning that means those those historic materials should mentor us into an understanding they are for our learning so that we through the comfort of scripture might find hope hope that makes not ashamed that if he did it before then he's able to do it again and one of those mysteries that represents a system of advantage as i call them you see everybody's life is ordinary and the same except for the leverage that the systems of advantage provide for you so we all have common destinies but we begin to rewrite our destinies as we access the systems of advantage we introduce these dimensions of kingdom reality to our lives and our lives begin to change so it is possible to find two people born of the same woman under the same conditions sociologically speaking and territorially speaking so you would think that their destinies would look like the same one and you know would, would, would be the same but one of them would access these systems of advantage and begin to change things in their lives when they looked at Jesus because of his association with Nazareth even Nathaniel spoke and said can anything good it was not Nathaniel's fault Jesus never said you are lying that is the pattern except that the son of the living God already had his to change it everything is true until your life changes it it is true that delay is there it is true that failure is there it is true that spirits associated with territory can manipulate disfavor upon people it remains true until you rise by light are we blessed and so we want to explore very briefly the mystery of restoration that among the mysteries the body of truth according to matthew 13 and verse 11 in one of his mentorship sessions jesus began to teach and while he was teaching in parables he was shrouding mysteries in those parables and then later on he would explain to the disciples and he said it has been given unto you to know the word know there does not just mean an awareness it's the same word that is used as a man knowing his wife an encounter with proofs it has been given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven these are the ordinances that cause the saints to command dominion on earth you may have heard me say it once and again that dominion is not an impartation dominion is the resultant effect of your comprehending the mysteries of the kingdom hallelujah the mystery of restoration are we still together Joel chapter 2 and verse 25 we've learned from scripture and we've learned from the experience of living that it is possible to lose things sadly many people have lost loved ones sadly many people have lost money sadly many people have lost time so there are the bible lets us know that the concept of losses or losing is a concept that exists with men we can lose things but according to the, the the bible the greatest loss that can happen to a man is not the loss of things it is the loss of time and so when he begins to talk about restoration his emphasis is the years not the things I will restore the years because when you meet a dying man he will not ask you to make, transfer money into his account the greatest need of a dying man is more time Isaiah 38 Hezekiah did not require more money or an enlargement of his throne or rest round about Hezekiah's request was God give me more time that means whatever steals your time is a true enemy if you lose money and gain it back you lose your reputation there are systems to build it back but when you lose time listen please 
it is because of these that the Bible says to walk circumspectly as wise, he says, and not as unwise. And what is the wisdom there? Master anything you know in scripture that will help you to redeem time. He called it wisdom. That means when I explore the mysteries of the kingdom, it will give me an advantage over time. Are we together? If you lose time, they may not physically speaking be a way of gaining it back. But we thank God because we serve a God who does not live in time. We thank God because we serve a God who does not really even live in eternity. Because eternity is still a subject of time. It's just time without end. We serve a God who lives in a realm that the Bible calls unapproachable light. His realm is now. No past, no present. No future now the concept of distance time does not is not a reality that exists in his realm it was a borrowed phenomenon to help men catch up with him that god does not leave genesis 1 verse 1 in the beginning god created the heavens and the earth that means he was not in the heavens he was not in the earth you can't create what you are inside are we together now, Please sit down, pay attention. So when we talk about the mystery of restoration, we are trusting by the spirit of grace and wisdom to explore the systems of advantage. Listen, it is on the strength of these mysteries that Apostle Paul will say, for we know that all things, all things do not just work just because we are Christians. There is a system of advantage we have that regardless, that's why many times when you are complaining, God really does not listen because in his realm, it doesn't make any difference what you've lost or what you had. It, it doesn't, those realities are, are, are vain. It is within his power to reconstruct anything as though it never left. So when you are saying, God, remember what I went through, he says that, that is unnecessary. There, there are too many mysteries I can use to bring you back. It's why it's painful to not trust God because it's an insult on his ability that even in heaven they are not done learning his ability in heaven without the constraint of the mortal nature with that heightened level of intelligence and through ages they have they have been students of God in heaven and yet they have not been able to comprehend so when the inhabitants on earth now begin to use the the temporary vacillations to insult the character of God is indicting on his nature. When God says he is God, it takes the spirit of God to help you understand the meaning of that statement. Now you be God, almighty God. Listen to yourself. You know be man. Stop. Let me explain that to you. God is not a man. He only became a man. When you say God is a man, that means he must submit to someone. The person who created him must demand worship from him. But he became a man, meaning that it was an inconvenience he wore for as a representation of love, not weakness. You see that? We are men, we are not God. We are men, but he made us. It's a translation. So that our dominion, this godlike dominion today is not absolute dominion, it's shared dominion. Dominion that can be withdrawn as proof that it did not originate from you. You, you, you get what I'm trying to explain? Yes. So when, when we say God is not a man, and then the Bible says the man Jesus is seated at the right hand of the Father, it's not a contradiction. God is not a man, but he became a man so that he will reveal the extent of the love of the father but i assure you god is not a man hallelujah praise the lord genesis chapter 40 help us holy spirit the things that are written aforetime the bible declares that they are for our learning so that we through the comfort of scripture might find hope Genesis chapter 40. Just a little background. This is the story of Joseph and his sojourn from his father's house to the place of destiny. This is a classic on understanding the dynamics of destiny. 
it is one of the classic expressions of how a man can transit himself from his father's house through the vicissitudes of life into a place of prophecy there is a spiritual road map through the life of joseph that if understood discerned and followed by any christian inevitably regardless of that which you face on the way you will emerge not only a champion but you will be a representation of the desire of god are we together yes this is very, very powerful. It's amazing, Pastor Sam, that when you begin your journey with God, he never tells you what will happen on the way. He will tell you that you will get to a land flowing with milk and honey so that you will set your gaze on that end. But the dynamics of that journey is something that we must learn. Are we together? Please follow me. Genesis chapter 40. So um, at this point, a lot had happened to him his time in the house of Potiphar and Potiphar's wife who came around and said he raped her and cut the long story short he's in the prison now are we together and it came to pass 40 verse 1 after these things that the butler of the king of Egypt and his baker had offended the Lord of Egypt verse 2 and Pharaoh was wrought against two of his officers against the chief of the butlers and against the chief of the bakers and he put them in word in the house of the captain of the guard into the prison hmm, the place where Joseph was bound stop there please look up very interesting rendition that there are times there is a location in destiny please keep that scripture where both good and bad people meet there is a location in destiny that does not necessarily depend on the accuracy of your work or otherwise. The Bible says two people who had offended the king came into the prison and to their shock, they found out that the innocent was also in the prison. That the godly was also in the prison. That there is a place where both men of character and lack of character can meet. There is a place where men who are sincere and passionate and those who are lazy and unserious will meet. This is a very strange mystery. Are we together now? So the discourse starts in the prison. Why will a good man and an evil man still find themselves in the same position? A man who feared God, who eschewed evil, who on account of his integrity you would think that that man should just be defended and never even need to go through such a thing where is the scripture that says i was young and now i am old i've never seen the righteous forsaken please give us that scripture this is a revelation that will help us by the spirit to mature and edit our interpretation and also discern how god answers prayers because when God speaks to you, you must understand what he's saying. For instance, Mary's trouble started the day he said you are highly favored. That means everything that follows God's statement in his eyes is called favor. From the day God tells a woman you are highly favored, she gets into trouble. Her stomach is protruding. There are rumors all around. And they are saying, Mary, I thought you were a virgin. And she says, I still am. And says, so how do you explain this? Which rabbi came around and no, 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 no. It was a ghost. I met an angel who told me a ghost from heaven will come. And that what is in my womb is a holy child. You know how stupid that sounds? And yet in the mind of God, he calls it favor. So could it be that what you are going through now, that the devil is making you feel that it is defeat in the eyes of prophecy because a day will come the reward will be for only the, the person who the person who has passed through what you have passed through and if you have not gone through that kind of thing you cannot qualify for it are we together there are times in life where they will invite you to come and preach not because you can preach but you are the only one who have gone through what you have gone through and you have earned the right God calls it Are we together? That a day can come in your life. Look up, please. When the requirement will be the person who was never raised by a father. 
never raised by a mother, who among the people to be honored went through life on his own, unassisted, you will now find out that your 13 years of pain now puts you in a position of exclusivity. There is a monetary value to pain. There is a destiny value to pain. You must learn to read the writings on the wall so you do not call what is profitable a disaster. Is God helping us? So back to the scripture. We're exploring the mysteries of restoration. The discourse starts with the prison. Are we still together? That an innocent young boy who served the Lord sincerely and you know the beautiful thing about scripture is that it gives you an opportunity to see the story from God's standpoint and from the standpoint of man. It would have been a disaster if we did not have the opportunity to know the truth of the story. Because it would then alter our interpretation about Joseph. So good people and evil people can find themselves in the prison. So Jesus can be on the cross and yet two criminals are by his left and right and all of them are hanging on a cross. So if they say, give me the list of all who are hanging on the cross, you will call Jesus too as one of those hanging on the cross. And by the interpretation of men, anybody who hangs on the cross is a sinner except that one is hanging on the cross not for the sin he committed for himself. It's a sacrifice for others this already should be a message to give us wisdom that when you see people go through things you cannot understand the secret is to pray for them and remain discerning because there are people carrying burdens they have no business carrying God part of the requirement of the grace they carry has compelled them to go through things that ordinarily they will never have gone through Listen, it's a mystery in the making of men. It's how compassion is built. The ability to be touched with the feelings of, inf of, God's inf of, of the infirmity of God's people. Do you know that if you are called into the healing ministry, you will be surprised at the kind of training you will go through. You will never be able to minister to people with a dimension of innocence. There is a requisite level of association. You must know what sickness does to people so that it will fuel compassion passion when you see someone on a wheelchair this is more than your ego there is there is a memory bank in your history where you can draw power from it would have been unfair for God to say men did not love him without becoming a man even though he was God he needed to become a man subject himself through the limitations of men and Jesus was surprised that when he became a man he cried he was surprised that when he became, ah, are you getting blessed? That when he became a man, he was hungry and cursed a tree. When he became a man, he saw them insulting the house of God, turning it into a place of merchandise. He did not report them. He flogged them. Now, when he ascended to heaven as man, he tells the father, I was there. I know what it means to come and preach on Sunday when there is a plethora of betrayal waiting for me as a man of God. I, I understand. I know what it means to be praying for people and praying for people and maybe your own family may be going through the same challenge. Yet the burden of ministry demands that you remain true and consistent. That you learn to look beyond yourself. There is a time when both Joseph and the wine presser can be in the prison. So if they ask you as an onlooker to give a judgment about all those you find in prison, you can use the attitude of sarcasm to say, I saw Joseph, I saw the builds and altar that is backed up by blood. That even in the secret, the jealousy of God is invested upon that altar. Believe There are certain doors that you don't use a key, you use blood to open them. And there are men and women who have gone through this laborious, the training of the great is a training that God has to hold your hand to go through. 
some of you right now as I'm speaking to you you are seated you are in that season hmm. cry with honor do not be ashamed of your scar what looks like a symbol of shame today will become your badge of honor he said let no man trouble me that the difference between an attack of the enemy and a season you are passing through is that even in the pit there is still the signature of dominion and favor the bible says even though it was in the prison there was a token that god left that let this be a signature oh joseph that when darkness is all around you remember that this seed of dominion is still within you now for time's sake the bible tells us that joseph that man never did joseph give them the history of how he got there he was more passionate about serving them and lifting them and heaven was marking that examination Joseph had every legitimate ground to say, young man, don't disturb me with your noise. You offended the king. It's a shame that you got to the throne and you are still back to the pit. I'm an innocent man with prophecy upon my head. I've worked with character and integrity and now I find myself here. But Joseph said, forget about me. My focus is to see that you are lifted. So then death works in us. The Bible says that life will work in you. That your trust when the money comes God says bring it to this ministry and sow it and you walk like someone who doesn't know what he's doing and while you are doing it an onlooker is saying this church thing is really making people mad and they do not know that there is a system of justice that is vetting the sincerity and the purity of your heart are we blessed A prison is a place of confinement. A prison is a place of delay. A prison sometimes can be a place of slavery. But I want to tell you prophetically, a prison is a training ground. It's a place where God trains you. Are we blessed? Many of us are there now. Never trust people who do not have the history of a prison in their journey. Uh -uh. There is a requisite level of qualification that you're passing through the prison adds to your spiritual credentials as you minister on behalf of his majesty. I don't want to know your story. Tell me your pain. There are things I'm searching for. I don't trust your compassion until I see what you've gone through. If you have not been touched with the feelings of the infirmity, I don't believe you truly love people. There are things you go through that fuel genuine compassion. When someone comes to your office and says, Man of God, I'm not an irresponsible man. This finance thing is not just working. You don't laugh at him with sarcasm. You say, I've been there. I serve God with my heart and suddenly the grace rises from that gate of compassion. There are many talkatives in the body of Christ without the history of the dealings of the spirit. This is why compassion has not been able to come in the heart of many people. There are people who love God and train their children as best as they could. Raise them in the way of God. And those children just decided to go wayward. Be careful when you begin to conclude and, anal and analyze on those things. And say, no, no, if you train that child well, it may not always be so. Even Jesus, who beheld the word every day for three and a half years, while the crusade was going in negotiation to make money out of Jesus was going on. Is God speaking to us tonight? The prison. For the sake of time, let's discuss the subject of losses. We cannot understand restoration and we cannot understand coming back, bouncing back until we understand losses. To lose means to part ways with something, someone valuable. 
or a time to pathway with time to pathway with, with something to pathway with someone and i wrote down here very quickly we'll look at it five scriptural reasons why people lose anything at all five scriptural reasons now these reasons capture both the training of the believer and a caution to a careless one are we together no. number one the first reason according to scripture why people lose is lack of discernment please make sure you write it down hebrews chapter 2 and verse 1 please help us media hebrews chapter 2 and verse 1 the first reason why people lose in this kingdom is lack of discernment it says therefore we ought to give the more earnest heed to the things which we have heard lest at any time we should let them sleep it was while men slept the bible says that the enemy came as a farmer too and planted something so it says awake thou that sleepest and christ shall give you light lack of discernment in Genesis chapter 28, the story of Jacob's encounter at Luz that he would later call Peniel. It was the encounter where he saw a ladder ascending from the earth to the heaven. When you go to verse 16 of Genesis 28, the Bible says Jacob himself counseled himself and rebuked himself. He woke up from sleep. So the problem was sleep. He woke up from sleep and said, surely the Lord is in this place. And I did not know. There are many people who have lost seasons because they could not discern. There are many people who have lost relationships because they could not discern. There are many people who have missed an opportunity to receive territorial anointings because they could not discern. Discernment. Lack of discernment. Number two, for time's sake, we have to rush. The second reason why people lose in this kingdom and then in life and destiny is carelessness. The second biblical reason why people lose is carelessness. An attitude of non-challenge to life, non-challenge to destiny, non-challenge to work, Hebrews chapter 2 and verse 3, please. How shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation? How shall we escape? That means bondage is imminent for anybody who lives a life of negligence. Are we together? Carelessness. Taking life for granted. Taking things for granted taking opportunities for granted oh there's a free mentorship session with my pastor but what is that about i mean i can always get it careless approach to life one day i'll be anointed i, I think there's there's always time all this fasting and prayer is, is an interruption to my life carelessness he says, I must walk the works of him that sent me while it is day. There is timing with destiny. Every time is not the right time. Every time is not convenient. He says, while it is day for the night cometh when no man can walk again. Are we together? Yes. In athletics, in football, and most sports, they have an age range. No matter how passionate you are about it, once you pass that age range, sorry for you. Football, they have an age range. Tennis and all of these sports, they have an age range. Athletics, it is important for you to know that there is timing to destiny. So carelessness, Revelation chapter 3 and verse 11. Revelation 3 and verse 11. Read with me, please, if you're a Christian and you can see it. One, two, read. Behold, I come quickly. Hold fast which thou hast, that no man carelessness. Let it never be for you that let his bishopric, let another take. 
carelessness. Number three, very quickly. Why do we lose in this kingdom? Ignorance of the laws of life, the laws of destiny, laws of the kingdom. Ignorance of the laws of life, the laws of destiny, the laws of the kingdom. Psalm 82 and verse 5. That ignorance is a plague in this kingdom. It says they know not, neither will they understand that they walk on in darkness and all the foundations of the earth are out of course. Lack of light. Verse 6 says, I have said, all of you are gods and you are children of the most high. The tragedy is in the next verse, verse 7. It says, but you shall die like mere men and fall like one of these princes ignorance ignorance is a terrible plague Isaiah 60 and verse 1 says arise shine it says not because you are tired of sitting there for your light has come not because your light is around it's always been around but the day it comes to you Ezekiel chapter 2 when you read from verse 1 and 2 he had an instruction rise up and he had no strength he says, but the spirit entered into me, verse 2, and set me upon my feet. It takes light. It takes an understanding of the ways of God. Many people are ignorant of the ways of God. We just live our lives sociologically. Sadly, you hear this all around our society. Why sayings like one day go better? Why sayings like, um, I know one day, one day things will change. You see, all those kinds of thinkings will be to our own peril our lives must be intentional the bible says he that strives for mastery is not crowned except he strives lawfully the quality of my life and your life is predicated on our depth of spiritual illumination our understanding the ways of god not just a religious study of scripture but study of scripture that reveal to us the keys of the kingdom are we blessed? Number four, why do we lose in life and in this kingdom? Abuse and misuse. The fourth reason why we lose, abuse and misuse. In Matthew 25, the parable of the talents, when you read from verse 14 down to 30, Matthew 25, the Bible talks about the parable of three men who were given talents. One was given five, the other two, one. The Bible says the one with five went and traded it and returned back with a hundred percent. The other one with two returned back with a hundred percent. And the one who had one, already he had an attitude of bitterness and jealousy and anger. And he went and buried it. You bury seeds, not talents. And when the master came, he said, I know you are a hard man. You like to reap where you did not sow. So I thought instead of wasting my time, let me bury it. Here is your seed. And God called him wicked and unprofitable. That everything God gives you. Let me tell you something. You see, we talk a lot about transfer. Whether well transfer or it's not only unbelievers that good things leave. Believers who have, who have a track record of abuse and misuse will also lose things because God is a God of, of, of caution and he's a God of responsibility if you are hungry and he feeds you with five loaves and two fish and you now eat and you are full and carelessly waste the rest he will say go and gather the crumbs but tomorrow you can be sure you will not get that bread again God was so meticulous, he showed us a sense of responsibility and caution. When all those guys ate and they littered everywhere and left, he said, go and gather the crumbs. And they gathered 12 baskets full. Abuse. There are people who have abused power. There are people who have abused and misused money. There are people who have abused and misused the anointing. Abused and misused leadership. Africa as a continent is in a plague today sadly because of different levels 
of abuse and misuse of authority and power. The fifth reason why we lose in this kingdom, it can be because of the tests and the trials that we are going through. It is possible that because of the dealings and the trainings you are going through in the spirit, for the sake of your destiny, momentarily, certain things can be withdrawn from your life. That is true. The Bible does not leave us in the dark as to the fact that during your period of training, it was Apostle James chapter 1 from verse 2. Please give it to us, James 1 and verse 2. He said, count it all joy, my brethren, when you go through diverse temptations, secure your stability with this knowledge he says knowing this James chapter 1 from verse 2 knowing this that the trying of your faith he says works patience are we together verse 3 and that when patience has had its full work in you it will be able to build you paraphrasing so that you may be perfect and entire wanting the word wanting there is lacking nothing so sometimes god takes things from you so that tomorrow you will not have any lack again there are times that god will take your seed of today away from you so that tomorrow you will not need to beg again it is not listen god does not just give he also takes away but when he takes away he really is a spiritual investment because with god it will always come back hallelujah Yes. So these are the five reasons that I piece together from scripture as to why people lose. A quick recap. Number one, that people lose because of lack of discernment. That people lose because of carelessness. That people lose because of ignorance of the laws of life, destiny, and the kingdom. That people lose because of abuse and misuse. But then that there are times that this group of people, because of the seasons that they are in with God, the season of dealing, that they can go through tests and trials. Job chapter 1, when you read from verse 9, the whole text is from verse 9 to 22. Job chapter 1 from verse 9 to 22. But let's look at at least 9, 10 and 11. The Bible says, then Satan answered the Lord and said, Doth Job fear God for nothing? Next verse. Hast thou not made a hedge about him and about his house and about all that he hath on every side? Thou hast blessed the work of his hands and his substance is increased in the land. Now hear what Satan says. But put forth your hand now and touch all that he had and he will curse you to your face. In other words, Job's allegiance and loyalty to you, oh God, is fake. He is only saying it on the strength of those things. The next verse, that should be 12. And the Lord said unto Satan, very scary scripture, behold, all that he hath is in thy power, only upon himself put not thy hand. So Satan went forth from the presence of the Lord. And then, sin two is what begins to happen in the earth. There was a day. The Bible calls it a day of adversary. That in every man's life, there is such a phenomenon, a day of adversary. That if you turn aside in that day, the diagnosis is that your strength is small. Mm. Hallelujah. I wrote here keys for restoration. Let's hurry up and touch on them so we can pray. Now that we have seen the factors that are responsible for losses... Please don't just write these things, study them and see where it applies to your life. For some of you, it is lack of discernment. You see, seasons are like the hand of a clock. When you miss it, it may come back, but you will have to wait a very long time. So like the magi, the wise men, you have to be discerning. To discern moments that you can capitalize on. keys for restoration it is true that God is a restorer it is true that God can restore hallelujah such a powerful comfort for the saints 
that no matter what you've lost, the mystery, I hope that we'll be able to deal with it, is that everything that leaves you is still on earth. Now, that's a very good news. If it leaves me and it is still on earth, then there is hope for recovery. And scripture says there is hope for a tree. Do you know why there's hope for a tree? Because provided the earth from where it came out from is still there, there is hope for a tree. There are four keys that I wrote here that are prophetic road maps. I wish we had time to walk this as seen in the life of Joseph. But if any one of you in this assembly following online from any part of the world, if you walk through this process, I give you a guarantee by the integrity of scripture, regardless what the situation is, you truly will come out. Are we together? This is where I want you to pray. In one minute, cry and say, Lord, open my eyes. No assumptions. Open my eyes. In the name of Jesus, that that which you are about to show, because many of us are at this point now, haven't explained to you the mystery of the prison, haven't explained to you the mystery of the losses around your life and destiny. Whether it was for a genuine reason or otherwise, I am showing you a prophetic road by the spirit that a way out can come if you can see are we blessed now look up please receive with meekness these truths that I want to teach you the first key I have found if you want to experience restoration in your life, your family, your spiritual life, your finances, your destiny. The first key to restoration according to scripture is self-examination and evaluation. The first biblical key to experience lasting restoration, the power of self-examination. Not just prayer, not just fasting, not just finding a man of God. In that order of priority, self-examination. There is nobody who receives restoration in this kingdom if you cannot sit down and be thoughtful. Second Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 5. Help us, media. Second Corinthians chapter 3. And verse oh dear look let's look at Luke 15 Luke 15 I wrote a scripture there that I can't seem to find Luke 15 from verse 17 to 20 the Bible talks about the prodigal son the story of the prodigal son remember the story the Bible says how that that gentleman Provided he was staying with his father, he was not satisfied coming under the authority of his father. And he wanted to live life at his own terms. And then scripture reveals that he left and lived a riotous life for many years. Notice lack started when he left his father. Now, the story of the prodigal son is not the story of sinners. Because it's a family. It has nothing to do with sinners. Number two, for your information, the story of the prodigal son is the story of two people with the same lifestyle. The only difference is one acted out his own, whereas the other hid his own in the heart. Both the elder brother and the old and the younger brother did the same thing. The only thing is that the younger brother was fast to act out his own rebellion, but the elder brother also had his own hidden there. Are we together now? So the Bible talks about this gentleman who later finds himself with the swine, pigs, eating from them. And then read verse 17, please. The first five words or six words. One to go. And when he came to, the Bible never said when an angel appeared to advise him. Listen, human beings have their wills and you can sit down and think through life. Please keep that scripture there. He came to himself. 
How do you come to yourself? By thinking there is the voice of your heart. The Bible says, say not in your heart. So you don't just think, you can speak in your heart. He came to himself. He said, how many hired servants? It's called the power of thoughtfulness. If you can take an introspect of your life and your destiny, self-examination. Are we together? Many people never rise from the shackles of life and destiny because they are preoccupied by offense and will not sit down and examine their own lives. Why am I like this? Why is my church not growing? Lord, you called me. Why is it that my pastor continues to prophesy over my life and people testify here every week? I am a faithful worker and according to the authority of scripture, I'm a bona fide partaker of the grace upon the man of God. Why is it not speaking in my life? He came to himself. There are times you need to go for a retreat, not just to pray. The Bible said, be still and know. There is a kind of knowledge that stillness brings. Are we together? That you go and lock yourself and sit down quietly and say something must be wrong. He came to himself. January, this happened. Just when I was recovering, my wife got sick. Just when she was recovering, my child got sick. Just when he was recovering, no, no, no. This is more than sickness. I see that there is a handwriting of Satan wanting to destroy my thoughtfulness. It's unfortunate that we live in a world where we are preoccupied by activities. And so thoughtfulness now is a luxury. But believers, hear me. In this end time, we must trust God for grace to hide away from people. If you're a man of God here, respectfully, this is an honest advice. You, you will never be a cutting edge tool in this end time. If you, the, the, the gallancy and the flamboyancy of ministry can deceive us into believing that just because activities are around Joshua Selman, it means we are making progress. We need to sustain the courage and the stamina to go back. In fact, in the spirit, Spirit, the more God honors you, he does it by hiding you. That everything that is glorious is hidden. If all of you is seen by all men, you are not powerful. And when Rebecca saw Isaac, she veiled herself as a proof that she was a bride befitting for him. As soon as she saw Isaac, the one she would be connected to, she veiled herself. It is the reason why your heart is hidden. It is the reason why the sensitive or comely parts of your body, like Apostle Paul was teaching, are hidden. Don't be embarrassed when God hides you. He's hiding you as proof of the value he has for you. Are we together? But we're dealing with self-examination. The young man sat down one day and came to himself. He said, how many hired servants does my father have? And I am here feeding with the swine. I will arise and I will go to my father, he said. And I will say, father, I have sinned against you and against heaven. And I am not worthy. He had not gone home. He was discussing self-examination. That in the name of Jesus, I will not be a lazy man in this Abuja again. The Bible Bible says the earth is the Lord's. I know there is a portion for me. I have been giving excuses and saying all my family members are like that. I know my father did not train me. I know I did not have the leverage of uncles and aunties. But if I continue to give this excuse, I will find out one day I'm 50 years, 60 years, 70 years giving excuses. From today I make up my mind. Self-examination. This life of disobedience and dishonor to my pastor. Every time he's prophesying, I stand and I say, oh, I'm the one washing his car. And for five years, I've not received any testimony. I come back to myself. I'm coming for this service with my heart open. And if my pastor is prophesying, I will not just see him as my pastor. He is God's apostolic voice to me. Self-examination. Fear a man who has sat down to think. He's ready to rise. Listen, 
Let me tell you how restoration came to Samaria. I wish we had time. We would have walked scripture tonight. The Bible says there were four lepers. For as long as they were silent and not thinking, they remained on the ground. But when prophecy came, the spirit of wisdom landed on them. And they began to think and contemplate. Why sit we here till we die? They began a conversation. Charlie hmm. Paruskiata. Let's get up. If we fall into their hands, at least let's take that risk and make meaning out of our destiny. Instead of sitting down and giving excuses, Nigeria is not working. Let me go and look for land at least somewhere. I may not have the money to buy it, but they will not arrest me for seeing. Let me, let me, let me trust God for grace. Self-examination. No, I, I, I think Reverend Abba is too busy to see me. I, I need this grace. And I keep seeing him in my dreams. But I'm sure one day, by God's divine mercy, he will connect us. You are joking. You are really joking. One day you have to sit down and ask yourself, am I ready to sit here in pride or humble myself and pursue like the woman with the issue of blood? And you may get up and say, I will come and sit in the church here. On that day, God will say, my son, please come around and just stroll. You see, the, the prodigal son didn't need to reach home before he met his father. That means the father was already walking too. But he needed to examine himself and take a step of faith. Someone say in the name of Jesus. Please shout it. Say in the name of Jesus. I receive grace to sit down and be thoughtful. I kill every excuse over my life, my ministry, my destiny. Turn it into prayer in one minute. Lord, I'm tired of giving excuses. Why I remain small, why I fail. I'm tired of giving excuses. Why the unction of the Spirit is not upon my life. There are enough anointed vessels for my life to change. Someone is praying. Please be serious. Pray. Someone is praying in the name of Jesus. Come to yourself. Come to yourself. I'm tired of laziness. Come to yourself. One more minute as you pray. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Please sit down. I want you to enter a covenant with your destiny tonight that I'm going to go back home and ask questions. We have an altar in our family. It's not new. The altar brought my grandfather. He brought my father. So I'm suspecting that's what is happening. I'm sure one day I'll think about it. Oh my goodness. Oh no, sir. Oh no, sir. One day you have to wake up by 2 a.m. and say, sleep. You hang on. I am sick and tired of this. I come to myself that what killed my father and God opens your eyes to see that there is an arrow looking for your destiny and for your children and you stand with power and fire self-examination it was God's servant Bishop Oyedeko that said when they started the church in Kaduna listen to me I started ministry in Zaria I know the spirits and the altar in that territory the lifespan of impact is three years if you reach three years, something must bring you down and bring your ministry out in shame. So I understand what you were saying because they are ancient gates. And he said the church was not growing. He would have given the excuse. But he said, you know what? Let's gather a few of the leaders. And they began to examine, to contemplate. Suddenly the spirit of God brought him out according to him and showed him a thick layer of darkness that misrepresents the ministry. And he, he did something about it and all of a sudden doors open. Why are my younger brothers feeding me? 
Why am I the one who I am the one who invites all of them for encounter programs? And yet at this level of life, I've not been able to build a house. At this, it's not like your faith is tied to those things. But hear me, there has to be a consolation to your Christian experience. If by and large fruits do not grow on that tree, life will not give you forever as an excuse. Are we together? Until you love your destiny more than sleep, you are not ready to rise. There are times when you should, it's not an attack. You just sit down and you are angry and say, look, my wife, wake up. We need to discuss this thing. What is going on in this family? Abuja is a good land. Someone came to Abuja in January and right now they have seen the faithfulness of God. We've been here since 1998. Something is wrong. We confess our ignorance, but for starters, let us come to that point of recognition. I can assure you, if we call God's servant, your pastor and father today to come and hold this mic and tell you his story of sojourn through this land, I am sure that we are going to weep in this place like a funeral, a testament of audacity and power, waking up in the night. Thank God for your dream. Joseph had a dream, but you wake up to fulfill it. Dreams are powerful, but they don't happen in the realm of the spirit. Men who dream, wake up. Can you prophesy and say, myself, wake up? <laughs> One more time, myself, wake up. Don't be embarrassed. This is a conference. Myself, wake up. <laughs> Hallelujah. Wake up. He came to himself. Number two, few minutes and we're done tonight. The second key that provokes restoration in this kingdom is the power of brokenness. Psalm 51 and verse 17. It is not enough to examine yourself. You must get to a point where the Bible says that the sacrifices of God are a broken spirit. It says a broken and a contrite heart. Oh God, thou will not despise. That means God cannot ignore a broken person. Brokenness requires many things. A recognition. And then you have to admit brokenness. Lord, it is my, I've been living life at my own terms. I am sure it's my pride that has brought me to this place. And Lord, I'm not ashamed. I go down on my knees to you who is the maker of the heavens and the earth. If you don't help me in this city, I cannot rise. I come before you. There's nothing to be ashamed of. Brokenness. Brokenness is a very powerful mystery. As a man of God, you come to God broken. Lord, I love you, but lately I found out I've just been doing ministry just for the sake of money. And it may not be that I'm evil, but sincerely I think uh, maybe, maybe there are things in my life. I'm, 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 there, 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 are, there are too many compromises, but I come before you sincerely. There is one thing I know about God. When God sees brokenness, he cannot ignore it. Genuine brokenness. Hallelujah. Brokenness. Where you open up your heart sincerely like the psalmist and say, search my heart and try my thoughts. Check, oh God, if thou see any evil way in me, please lead me to the way everlasting. Some of you here, if you are broken enough, you will come out of that situation. The problem is you are still giving explanations and then hoping. You see, this pride is a dangerous thing. Whatever you do, fight pride from your life. You cannot do bold face for life. You have to just humble yourself and say, Lord, show me mercy and help me. A broken and a contrite heart. Number three. What is the third key that sponsors restoration in this kingdom? Are we making progress? Knowledge. 
Proverbs chapter 11 and verse 9. Knowledge. You need knowledge. A recognition of the grace and the mercy of God is important, but you need knowledge. Proverbs chapter 11 and verse 9. The B part is my part of emphasis. It says, through knowledge shall the just be what? There is a kind of deliverance that is conducted by casting out the spirit influences behind that situation. But there is a kind of deliverance that happens as a fortification through knowledge. The Bible says to preach deliverance, not only to conduct it. There is a dimension of revelation that secures deliverance. Everyone please say knowledge. Isaiah chapter 60 and verse 1, Amplified says, Arise from the prostration and the depression that circumstances have kept you. It says, Rise to a new light. You see, it's important for us to know that we need light. Light enough, not just light. Jesus wept over Jerusalem and said, Oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, if you had known, even in this time, the things that pertain unto your peace, he says, but now they are hidden from your eyes. You need to go for knowledge. Gather the tapes of your pastor. Gather the CDs. Take a three days time of fasting and prayer. And sit down and flog it out with destiny. Lord, open my eyes. What is the key to speed? Open my eyes. What is the key to sustainable influence? Open my eyes. Why are my hands empty? Lord, open my eyes. And while you are listening to the message, suddenly, as the man of God is ministering, light breaks. Exodus chapter 3 and verse 21. God will open your eyes to explain to you the mystery of an empty hand. He said, and I will give these people favor in the sight of the Egyptians. And it shall pass that when ye go, ye shall not go empty. Lord, why have I not gotten a property, whether for myself or something? I know there is a way. Psalm 44, I think, verse 3. They got not the land in possession by their own sword. So this is not a, a thing of sword. Neither did their own arm save them, but thy right hand and thy arm, and the light of thy countenance, because thou hadst a favor unto them. Luke 2, 52. And Jesus increased in wisdom, in stature, in favor with God and with men. Esther chapter 2 from verse 15, the B part says, and Esther obtained favor in the eyes of all them that looked upon her. Verse 17 now says, same scripture. It says, and Esther was loved by the king above all the women she obtained grace and favor in his sight more than more than more than suddenly you begin to pray it in your life and walk those keys and your life will change like day and night is god helping us we need knowledge Please fight ignorance like you fight Satan. Fight ignorance. Ignorance is a dangerous thing. In this end time, you cannot live your life wishing and hoping. You must get exact knowledge. The Bible says to walk circumspect as wise and unwise. Arrange the various aspects of your life where you are trusting God for sustainable lifting. And fish out the mysteries that connect your desires to your destiny what is responsible for speed what is responsible for church growth what is responsible for transgenerational impact and influence what is responsible for ever increasing fire what is responsible for the anointing of the spirit what is responsible for relevance within the context of a generation there are mysteries that control these dimensions it is the glory of god to hide a thing but it's the honor of the kings to search it out. I was teaching in Lagos and I gave a parable that the Lord opened my eyes to see. Theologically, it's called the parable of the lost coin. The Bible says that a woman lost her coin in a room. She knew that there was a precious jewel in that room that could make her wealthy, could make her great, but it was missing. 
And the first thing she did was to light a candle. Light. You cannot search in darkness. The second thing she did was to find a broom. With that broom, she swept everywhere. That's how we search for things. A candle and a broom. A broom talks of your hunger and your consistent pursuit. You sweep by getting all the tapes your pastor preached on faith. You don't get one or two because you may find part one of the revelation that will liberate you here. Then you now go to a 2016 message and find the other parts that God is building for you. It's called sweeping. You need light enough. I made a statement a few days ago. Morning, the breaking of day does not depend on time. It depends on the victory of light over darkness. Every time light prevails over darkness, you call it day. It is not when it is 6 o'clock or 8 a.m. that you say it's day. No. All through the night, there is a warfare between darkness and light. The time that light wins is what you call day. So if light wins by 2 a.m., it will become day. Are we together? Yeah. Knowledge. Knowledge. I have cherished knowledge as a man of God and I have cherished knowledge as a person. I am, I am a passionate seeker of knowledge. I'm not embarrassed by the things I do not know. My heart is very open. When I find truth that is relevant to my life and destiny, I'm like a sponge. My heart is open unashamedly. The proof of passion is pursuit. You have to trust God for grace to pursue knowledge. You will never gain knowledge at your own terms. Dr. Mudok would say adaptation is proof of honor. You have to bend. Getting knowledge from those who carry them will require stamina and sacrifice. I'm sorry to say it, but we live in an arrogant generation that want to be great at our own terms. Let the pastor see me. I can, my, I'm busy. Uh, I can, I'm, I'm, I'm only free between 11 and 12. Please see me then and pray for me. You are in trouble. No. The woman with the issue of blood kept asking. She was just hoping. She knew Jesus would pass. Ask the men and the women of God who carry real grace. They will tell you the story of their endurance as they pursued God and they pursued vessels that really carried fire. Many of them would travel for conferences they have no business attending and would sit down quietly like fools. I've shared my testimony many years ago. I was in a Reinhard Bonke crusade. There was a grace upon him that I desired, Pastor. I traveled down to Joss. He was coming for a crusade. I didn't just sit down and say, oh God, this is the grace I want. You are the giver of all good things. If you've been evil, know how to and quote those scriptures out of context that legitimize laziness and mediocrity. I went and stood on that crusade ground for six hours the first night. I watched this man minister. I have revelation. I'm a man of God too. I've seen miracles in my own life too. But you will never receive from a colleague in this kingdom. There must be spiritual potential difference. It is through light and knowledge. Please listen. I will never forget the second day. I made up my mind that I'm not only going to come and stand on that crusade ground. Lord, I want to serve. I understand the power of service. And I saw them wheeling people on wheelchairs. I said, please, can I help? They said, no, no, no. These people belong to a committee. They are trained. I said, committee or no committee? You don't know how long I travel to be here. I must serve. While I was pushing the people to the front, I said, Lord, this is how my crusades and my meetings will be too. I saw with honor and with passion. All I need is you. Second day, he preached a very simple message. And he was about to take water and minister the baptism. 
when God opened my eyes, that was the first time I saw the manifestation of the Holy Spirit like a dove. It was a dove that was bigger than this building, praying around the crusade ground. I thought everybody was seeing it. I was watching. He was about to minister. The miraculous was about to happen. I had seen miracles. I had seen unbelievable situations by the Spirit of God. Listen, when you find what you need, break your pride, pay the price, pursue sincerely, allow fools and mediocres to make comments while you receive. We know that God is taking your master today. Save Johnny. And Elisha said, I know you are a temperous man, Elijah. Keep insulting me while I position to receive. Do you have the stamina to endure? Let me tell you, anointed vessels are difficult people. Some of them are arrogant. Some of them are insensitive. Do you have the stamina to look past those things and say, I know what my heart searches for. I can't be so selfish to allow my ego rob a generation of a dimension of God. The spirit of Elijah dot rest on Elisha. When that grace landed upon my life, I remember many years ago, the Lord gave me an instruction that he was going to lead me to God's servant to go and sow a seed, Bishop David Oedeko. And that morning, God told me this was the day. I will not tell you how much, but many of you will be surprised. I got up, got the next available flight. I went. Behind every story, there is, behind what is, every glory, there is a real story. Before you admire men, find out their story. Nothing works by mistake. There's nobody who wins the Olympic by mistake. I want you to cherish your pastors sincerely. Not every man of God will open up their scars to you to watch. No, the pain is too precious. I remember long and short when so the seed, when I came out, the Holy Ghost asked me to put my hand on the ground there in Canaan land and said, from today you have entered the overflow anointing. A product of many anointings it takes knowledge knowledge with hunger and passion hunger and passion the sacrifice of your pastor bringing vessels of grace to minister to you should be a clear proof that he sincerely loves you you know members sometimes i say this respectfully we need to honor the sacrifice we never know the adaptation and the sacrifice that the servants of god go through for the sake of the sheep he says a good sheep. there is no voice that say yet restore you will have to depend on someone who is already out of that prison the Bible says the king sent for Joseph and brought him out of the dungeon. The fourth key that brings restoration is the ministry of the prophetic. The ministry of the prophetic. Now, I know that respectfully speaking all across this land, Africa and the entire globe, there has been quite some excesses, errors, imbalances and outright failure in the administration of the ministry of the apostolic and the prophetic especially. I know that there have been excesses and all of those things. These things are not hidden. We say it with the heart of respect and honor for the body of Christ, but it is true. And so in a bid to manage these things, there are people who, are, who continue to advocate the complete annihilation of the prophetic and the apostolic ministry as a way of managing the imbalances and the excesses. No. Jesus said in Matthew 26, I will build my church. 
So he's the architect. You go to him to find out how he builds the church. And this is how he builds the church. He said Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. That immediately you encounter Jesus. There are two ministries you must meet. The apostolic and the prophetic to be built. This is how Jesus designed the church. That even in heaven the foundations are made of the 12 names of the apostles. Are we together? Hmm. Jesus, the Son of God, is in heaven desiring to come to the earth. And not even him in his power had the right to come into this territory without someone calling him. So Anna the prophetess had to spend years speaking and calling the word. You just know that the word became flesh, but do you know there were prophecies that made the word flesh? Number one, when Jesus was born, they quickly took him to these people. Jesus. Jesus walked under a closed heaven for 30 years, even as the son of God. No mention of his heavens open until he went to find the prophet who God was using before he came over that territory. Now, let me show you a mystery. Why many people remain grounded. John was not a Baptist. John was a prophet. Baptism was a strategy given to him to identify Jesus. So he will baptize and look up, he will say go. He will baptize and look up, he will say go. He will baptize and look up, he will say go. Baptize and look up, he will say go. Suddenly, shalika paruta siata. By the prophetic, he identifies a young 30-year-old man. And he says, behold the lamb. You are not a man. Men see a man, but a prophet is seen a lamb. That takes away the sins of the world. I am not worthy to untie the latchets of your shoe. I'm sure if Jesus, if Joshua Selman were Jesus, you say that's nice for recognizing that I'm not a small man. But John made a statement that is a prophetic instruction. Suffer it to be so. This is an ordinance. If I do not submit to what you represent, my own heavens cannot open. This is your Bible. John and God is watching in heaven. John dips Jesus in the water. He comes out and your Bible says, and the heavens open. And the Holy Ghost descended and then the father spoke he said this is my beloved son question what was he before listen please this is my beloved son in whom i am well pleased and he gave earth an instruction nobody could break hear ye him who has told your church that who has told your products that has somebody told your products, Abuja, hear ye him? I show you why many people are grounded. Even when Apostle Paul met Jesus Christ, Jesus still referred him back to the house of Ananias and said, wait there. Why do you need to see a man when you have met Jesus? And he said, still wait. There is a system I have built for your lifting. Let me show you a mystery. You see, the dimensions of God that are distributed to the earth for the edification of the saints happen through covenants. Let me explain to you what that means. Faith, healing, God hides his anointing primarily in men. Are we together? Now, the way God works it out is that he calls, he finds men in every dispensation. And then through the sacrifice of alignment, he enters a personal covenant with them. Not Old Testament, not New Testament. A covenant with them that becomes the legitimate platform for administering that dimension of his grace within the lifespan of that dispensation. Now, when God finds such people, he now refers them on earth as the custodians of that dimension of him. 
any other person who must enjoy that dimension of him experientially must do it in recognition and alignment to those systems. They are not just men. They have become through covenant spiritual systems that administer dimensions of God. Are we together? Provided they are alive, God will never ignore their office in reaching you with that dimension. Let me give you an instance. On earth today, the spiritual system according to the wisdom of God that represents faith is Kenneth Copeland. Any man of God on earth that is operating faith that is tangible would have crossed that path to touch with that altar of alignment. The man that represents the healing ministry today on earth, it doesn't mean he's the greatest healer. No, this is not about greatness. It's about the election of grace of an individual who has become the spiritual conduit of a dimension. That individual today on earth is Benny Hinn. And that grace came upon him from Oral Roberts. Now, you need to, this is the protocol of lifting that many people do not understand. So when God says, I'm calling you into a healing ministry, I don't care how he starts dealing with you. One day, he is going to orchestrate. I mean healing ministry at a global level. One day, he is going to create a meeting point where you and that spiritual system that administered that dimension, you will collide. It's true. Did you read in your Bible that... Abraham met a strange man in an ancient city called Salem, called Melchizedek. Is it in your Bible? That God established his priesthood after that order. Melchizedek looked at Abraham and said, Blessed be Abraham, son of the Most High. He called him possessor of heaven and earth. Elijah was not a prophet. Elijah was a spiritual system that foreruns revival. That's why the Bible says before the Lord comes, before the great and terrible day of the Lord, Elijah will come. Elijah is the name given to a, a spiritual, apostolic, and prophetic system that realigns men back to the purposes of God. The name of that system is Elijah. It, a man only embodied it. That was why when Elijah died, the system continued in John. Just like Jezebel is not a woman, Jezebel is a system of rebellion that administers the system of Babylon by attaching herself to power and authority. Elijah dies, Jezebel dies, Elijah resurrects in John, Jezebel resurrects in Herodias. Jezebel promised Elijah to remove his head, and then we see that when they dance on the king's birthday. He said, what request will be granted? Listen to me. Let me teach you a mystery. The men you see that walk this earth are young, but what is upon them is ancient. It's the continuity of a relay. You have to understand this. I wish I were lying. I would have just apologized and we share the grace. But I'm showing you something that is a deep mystery. Challenges are not generic. They are dependent on the grace and the altar that confronts it. You can be going through something for decades, but the day you find the prophet sent, not the prophet available, the prophet sent, there were many widows in Zarephath, but to none was Elijah sent. The word that delivers is not the word you read. It is the word sent. We're about to pray. Silaka subranda ziata has kalabaria. They are taken for a prey, and none say it restore. Now listen to me. When you discern who your man of God is, for as long as you think he's a man of God, is a pastor, and. We are members of this church. You will never receive anything. There must be a deep contemplation of discernment. Who is this man? Know we no man after the flesh. What are the mysteries that sit upon his head 
that are responsible for the possibilities in his life. It is based on that revelation that you stand to receive. You can kneel down and yet you are standing up. That, that is just a, an emotional show. I mean a deep-seated recognition. I have met people that I know I was sent to. And it's amazing how what they call challenges were trivialized. Happy are you when you find the anointing sent to you. Let me tell you this. Not every anointing available will lift you. Yes, sir. All that you have given me, John 17, I have kept. And none is lost except the son of perdition. All that you have given me. All that you have given me. Are we together? There are men of God that require... I'm not just talking of someone higher than you speaking to you. There is a place for that. I'm not just talking of someone who is an elder in the faith just prophesying to you. There is a place for that. I'm talking of encountering the grace, the spiritual covenant that is connected to your destiny. Ignorant people will fight what I'm saying to their peril. Listen. I don't boast to know everything in the kingdom. I remain a student gleaning from the wisdom of men and women helped by God. But on this revelation, I tell you it is an office. I know what I'm saying. You know you have received when your results show. Thou anointest my head with oil. But the results are seen in my cup. It does not anoint your cup. The cup is a report card. It's showing what is on your head. Because my cup is empty. We're about to pray. And I want us to do something prophetic in two minutes. Forgive me. But I, I share the burden of your pastor. I'm going to pray for you. But I will respectfully plead, even if it is for one minute, that your pastor and your father please come to stand on this stage. And by the Spirit of God, he's going to utter words of restoration. Believe what I am telling you. You will, many of you, tomorrow will not come until your life starts changing. It's true. I didn't have time to do a thorough exegesis of the word. You will read the, the arrogance and the foolishness of men to the prophetic. The prophet says, by this time tomorrow. There are two dimensions of the prophetic. There is the revelatory dimension of the prophetic. And there is the creative dimension of the prophetic. The most superior dimension of the prophetic revealed to men is the creative dimension. Revelation gives you direction and then it imparts faith. Creation makes what has no business happening to happen. When he said by this time tomorrow, he was not revealing in advance what would have happened anyway. No. The same way you are going back home quietly and someone can look at you and by the mantle and the unction, he can program a climate of favor on your head and say go. A man's donkey is missing for three days. They prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed and could not get the donkey. But the moment Saul saw Samuel, they didn't talk about the donkey, just an eye contact, and the donkey started going back home. This is not human worship. Please discern what I'm telling you. And don't, don't mix it with some of these things that people do. But right now, we want to pray. In one minute, I don't know how you are going to cry to God, but please cry to God and say, Father, Every dishonor that I've communicated to this grace because of lack of discernment, I obtain mercy tonight and I receive with an open heart. I desire my life to change. I understand the ministry of the prophetic. Someone is praying. Someone is praying. Your life is about to change. Lift your voice and pray. Shilaparus kadibala satatia. Rekete badusa sikete balanda shalakato brahasadia. We're about to pray. What a life you will never be the same. 
someone is praying father the grace to be broken the grace to examine myself the grace to passionately pursue knowledge the grace to discern and open up my heart and my spirit to the prophetic and keeping God You are covenant keeping God Yahweh covenant keeping God Sila bashalanda sala shabraski barita hasha One more time Let me speak over your life and then your pastor will come and speak again. We do not stand sufficient in ourselves. We are only but products of his mercy and products of his grace. But let me tell you this, if you open up your heart to discern, you will marvel and wonder at what happens to your life from tonight. In the name of Jesus. I stand by the spirit of grace over your life inside, outside, the overflows and those following online. Every prison, spiritually, shilakata, financially, that you have found yourself in, in the name of Jesus, who is a help them please. Jesus, who is the son of the living God? Come out of that prison now. Come out of that prison now. Come out of that prison now. The Bible says he has broken the gates of brass and cuts the bars of iron in sunder. Every gate, ancient gates, shapakata, ancestral gates, locked up by witchcraft, help them please. I'm prophesying to someone, every altar that sits upon your destiny and will not let you go. You have fasted and you have prayed. I come in the name of Jesus, the son of the living God. I command fire on those altars now. Fire on those altars now. Fire on those altars now. Every opportunity you have lost, every relationship you have lost, in the name of Jesus, I call upon my God, the restorer of time, and I speak to you. Between now and the end of this year, I stand by the rod of the apostolic and the prophetic. Recover now. Believe what you are hearing. Recover now. Hallelujah. And the king sent for Joseph and they brought him out of his dungeon. I don't know who in this city has been ordained to send for you, but I stand in the name of Jesus and I speak to the north of Abuja, the south, the east and the west. Whoever must send for you to bring you out of that dungeon, I command that they send for you now. I command that they send for you now. I command that they send for you now.
everything that was lost shall be returned unto you. Everything that was stolen shall be restored unto you. Everything that was lost shall be returned unto you. Everything that was stolen. Alas, master, it was borrowed. And he said, where fell it? Let me speak to someone here. That financial debt is sitting on your head. Sitting on your ministry. And it looks like there is no way out. I call upon the God of Jeshurun. The one who rides upon the wings of the wind. And I declare, according to the time of life, be delivered now. Be delivered now. Be delivered now. Hear me. The Bible says the rod of the wicked will not rest upon the lot of the righteous, lest they dip their hands in iniquity. Every scheming of hell over your family, over your destiny to keep you grounded in the name of Jesus. He said, lose that man and let him go. I command be loose now. Be loose now. Be loose now. Be loose now. Sammy said in Psalm 3, many are they that rise up against me, he said. Many are they which say, where is thy help? He said, but thou, O Lord, you are a shield for me. He says, you are my glory, the lifter up of my head. I decree and declare every horn according to Zechariah 1 verse 18 that has lifted up his head against your destiny. O Judah, O city of peace, O city of praise, O city of worship, I come as a carpenter by the spirit of grace and I declare unto you in the name of Jesus, those horns are judged now. Those horns are judged now. by your left and right and sit down if you can. We call this koinonia. Simply koinonia. The place of his presence. God is in the midst of for ye are come unto Mount Zion, that mount where there are innumerable companies of angels, the spirits of just men made perfect, to the church of the firstborn. where he has chosen to leave us with the charisma of his presence. Adonai, Lamb of God, truly you are worthy, worthy of my praise. 
King of kings, Lord of lords, tonight let your kingdom reign in our hearts. Adonai. Worthy, worthy of my praise. King of kings, you're the Lord of lords. Let your kingdom reign. Not a special number. Let your kingdom come. Yeah. Let your kingdom come. This is our prayer. When his kingdom comes in your life, you will never be the same. Let his kingdom come upon that sick body. Let your kingdom come. First Thessalonians There are angels moving around just bringing impartations in people as we do. Mighty impartations of fire. This is what I see happening in the spirit. Your presence. Hallelujah. See, listen. No matter what you have, if you do not have his presence, you have nothing. I don't care what you have. That ultimate secret is his presence. You can fake power. You can fake anointing. But you cannot fake the presence of the mighty one. like him he's the lion and the lamb he's seated on the throne see this is not a special number mountains bow down every ocean roll to the Lord of Lord. just listen to me I'm ministering to your spirit who is this God? He's the lion and the lamb seated on the throne. The Bible says the mountains keep like lambs in his presence. Mountains bow down. Every ocean roll to the Lord of Lords. That is the one we serve. Mighty. It's 
great and mighty full of majesty and he brought you here to change your life he brought you to do something in your life that no power in existence can stop it is within his ability to create the change hallelujah listen many of you do not know see this is the ninth month and god is birthing a lot of things it was in this month i began to talk about the miracle service from the first week for as soon as zion travails she will put forth a son all of the teachings that we have been building upon sharing the secrets of the kingdom to prepare us for the things that the holy ghost is doing I'm calling you higher, say at the Spirit of God. I'm calling you climb up that mountain, say at the Spirit of God. Climb up that mountain where your eyes will see clearer. Climb up that mountain. Climb up that mountain. Feast upon the secrets of the Spirit. Feast upon the secrets of the Spirit, say the Lord. Feast upon the secrets of the Spirit. There is a path that no fowl knoweth. The whelps of the lion has not gotten there. Majestic is his presence. Hallelujah. First Thessalonians two, verse eight. First Thessalonians two. I'm sorry, not eight. Wherefore, we would have come to you, even I, Paul, once and again, but Satan hindered us. Wherefore, I would have come to you. It is my desire. For you to experience my presence. He said, but Satan hindered us. Wherefore, that blessing would have come to you. Wherefore, that healing, that breakthrough would have come to you. He said, I desire, but Satan hindered us. Tonight is a prayer meeting. We will pray. Wherefore, 
would have brought the breakthrough for the family. Wherefore, I would have opened you up to certain realms of grace and power. He said, but Satan, but Satan hindered us. Wherefore, that genotype would have changed by now. Wherefore, that act of witchcraft and divination over families and territories would have been addressed. He said, but Satan hindered us. Let me tell you something. The kingdom of God is hidden in laws and mysteries. And all through scriptures, you will find the operation of the kingdom hidden in stories, experiences, parables. They are a revelation of the patterns, the workings of the kingdom. It takes illumination. It's called the spirit of revelation. And then your eyes are open to see beyond the story. And then you begin to see the construction. The build up, the character and the operation of the kingdom. And when you understand it, you have those keys. Then you will command power in this territory. And this is what we seek to transfer. An understanding of the operation of the kingdom week after week this is our project to unveil unto you the secrets of the kingdom because when you find it then you will be able to operate in mastery in the last one or two months we have been unveiling a lot of things opening you up to the spiritual dimension of life all of the teachings have been a build up upon one and another to open you up to the spiritual dimension the bible says they know not neither do they understand they grope in darkness confusion and as a result the earth is out of course have i not said ye are gods and all of you are children of the most high he said but you shall die like men men and fall like one of these princes and the remedy is an unveiling. This is why we value the presence of the Holy Spirit so much. The body of Christ knows a lot. They know a lot of Bible stories. But insight into the truth to understand the operation of the kingdom is what is deficient. says my son pay attention to my words incline your ears to my sayings do not let them depart from out of thy heart keep them in the midst of the heart he said they are life to those who find them health to their flesh it will take your understanding of spiritual things it is understanding that will reduce satan to become nothing in your life hallelujah wherefore we would have come to you so there are many things that desire to come into your life breakthrough blessings increase he said but what happened satan hindered us satan hindered us hindered the blessing hindered the lifting hindered your insight access into the deep things of the spirit but satan hindered us hallelujah and tonight we have come to call the devil a liar we have come to open up the two lead gates that you will step into certain things that have a four time been given please take note of what is happening tonight there are healings already happening i'm seeing it in the spirit Hallelujah. We are going to be praying. This night we will be confronting the gates of darkness. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Tonight we will pursue. We will overtake. And we will recover all. Many people have taught all kinds of junk messages. Look at me. Wickedness is real. 
Don't let anybody fool you with any sugar-coated message. The Bible says the whole world lieth in wickedness. Hallelujah. Why do you need the power of the Holy Ghost? Because there are giants on every mountain. And the Bible says, how awe-inspiring are your ways. He said, through the greatness of thy power, shall thy enemies submit themselves. Psalm 66 verse 3. Wherefore, by now you would have been lifted. By now your family would have risen to a level. You would have stepped into another dimension. But Satan hindered us. Wherefore, you would have been walking in mighty levels of grace by now. Your destiny helpers have desired to come to you. But Satan hindered them. Wherefore, your life partner would have come into your life. You would have been happily married with dignity and honor, but Satan hindered them. Wherefore, that job, that opening, but Satan hindered us. This is Paul the Apostle speaking. I desire to come to you. I know the things I carry and I know that if I meet you, you will never be the same. So Satan hindered us. Wherefore, you would have been coming to, for Koinonia years ago, but Satan hindered you. Wherefore, your loved ones would have been here tonight with all your efforts to bring them, but Satan. I need you to know that Satan is determined to frustrate your Christian experience. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Satan is determined. He will use every spiritual arsenal within his control to see that he frustrates your spiritual life. Therefore, it will take understanding of the operations of the kingdom to triumph over him. He said, unto thee, O Lord, do I lift up my soul. Oh my God. He said, I trust in you. Let me not be ashamed and let not my enemies triumph over me. He's changing everything in obedience to Christ. Tonight, he's restoring everything. In obedience to Christ. Satan has hindered a lot of people. Listen. We have been explaining these things. Right from the teaching. Give me this mountain. That every time you arrive at that mountain. There are giants. Hear me. There are forces of darkness. Stationed across the earth. To ensure. That men do not rise. Zechariah chapter 1. This is a month of breakthrough. Something must happen in your life. I know that somebody believes this word. There are many who will sit down there and keep being cynical and watch others testify. Said they heard the word like we did, but the word did not profit them because it was not mixed with faith. Zechariah 1 from verse 17 down. cry yet saying thus said the lord of hosts my city's true prosperity shall be spread abroad and the lord shall yet comfort zion the moment he it speaks about breakthrough what happens next verse can you give us from amplified is it possible please amplified then i lifted up my eyes and behold four horns Immediately he told the prophet, this is your prophetic destiny. This is what should happen to you. He said, now lift up your eyes and see what has been hindering you. He said, I lifted up my eyes and I beheld four horns. Amplified says, symbols of strength. Next verse. And I said unto the angel who talked with me, what are these? I've not been taught in church that there are horns that can lift people. 
They have deceived me that you just confess and enter your destiny. This is strange. I've not been taught. What are these? Many of, be, of you have been deceived that all it takes is just to laugh and you just jump in and enter your destiny. All it takes is to just pack five naira and put an envelope and come and drop it. Or that they pour a little dot of oil. Let me tell you the truth. There is more to the operation of the kingdom than this. He said, what are these? It is strange. I have not been taught. I wasn't given this insight that after a promise there is a contention in the spirit to bring its deliverance. Most people just stop in verse 17. He said, now that I've told you your prophetic destiny, lift your eyes, let's tackle the resistance. What is this that you see? If it's raining, let them come in. Please come in. Sit anywhere. On the ground, on the altar, anywhere. Just find a place and sit down. Tonight is a serious meeting and we're going to pray. Listen. And he answered me. He said, these are what? The four horns of powers which have scattered Judas. Rob men of their praise. Rob men of their testimony. Judah means praise. Praise is an effect of a testimony. The well-doing of the Lord. Please come in. Come in everybody. Sit down anywhere. Come and sit here. Wherever you can find, just sit down. There are spaces all around. Ushers, please help them. I need everybody's attention. Are you following me now? He said they have scattered what? Judah, Israel, and Jerusalem. Hallelujah. Tonight we will pray. Oh, that devil that is holding your destiny. See, no matter how mad a man is, he does not enter fire by mistake. Is that true? No matter how mad he is, he can do stupid things and they say he's a madman. But when he sees fire, the Bible says he maketh his angel spirits and his ministers flames. Look up. Every promise in the Bible requires contentions in the spirit for you to actualize it. He said, this charge I give unto you, my son Timothy, that you wore a good warfare with the prophecy that has been released to you. There are more seats. Stand anywhere. No devil will stop you this night. So let hope rise. Darkness trembles in your home. Sing it one more time. Yeah. Let hope, let it rise. Hallelujah. Verse 20. Please follow me tonight. It says, Then the Lord showed me what? Four smiths or workmen. One for each enemy of the horn. He showed me four carpenters. He said, now I've shown you the horn. There are certain people I am going to send to you. He calls them carpenters. This is your promise. This is your destiny. Between you and your destiny, there are four horns. And the job of those horns is to scatter your life, scatter your finances, scatter your anointing, scatter your prayer life. He said, but I sent four carpenters. One for each horn. He said to beat it down. 21. Then said I, what are these horns or smith? So Satan sends his horn. See, let me tell you something. Go to verse 19. He said, these are four horns and four powers. Their job is to wreck your destiny. Are you listening to me? They are, they are patient. These are spirit entities scattered around the face of the earth. And every time they see anything that looks like growth and progress in your family, 
they are the ones they watch to see when your sister gets pregnant their job is to scatter he said to scatter judah judah is the place of praise israel is the place of promise 21 then said i what are these horns coming to do he says and he said these are the horns or powers that scattered judah so that what no man will lift his head there are forces hear me koinonia there are forces of darkness positioned by the powers of darkness he said wherefore i desire to come to you but satan hindered us so that no man will lift up his head they are scattered around our villages they are scattered around ministries so that certain ministries cannot lift up their heads so that certain destinies cannot lift up their heads that's the job every time anyone in your family is about to rise they contend in your academics in your finance the moment you begin to pray after one week your prayer life dies the horns the moment you have faith and say lord i trust you after three days something pushes you down are you following me now you enter a relationship two weeks something just happens and scatters everything who are these he said these are four horns they have been stationed and every time they see you lifting your head their job is to bring you down it's in your bible it says so that no man will lift up his head many ministries do not know the powers of darkness that try to tie them down are you listening to me the moment a ministry starts blossoming the men of god are carried away with money and prosperity and increase administrations they forget that there are four horns let the lord just declare a prophecy over your life and you will see these horns rise the moment they declared this is my beloved son in whom i am well pleased all hell broke loose he said i desire to give you prosperity I desire to give you increase but there are four homes there are four homes there are many families represented here what you are seeing in your dreams and visions and what is happening in your life is different between that dream and the manifestation are four homes they are gates are you following me tonight I came to preach my heart because we are going to pray four homes you go you go and apply for a job they are ready to respond to you three days later something comes up without any explanation see hear me believers if you don't take charge of your destiny and apply the keys of the kingdom you may remain forever and you will not lift up your hands thank you for lifting Thank you for lifting. Thank you for lifting. Thank you for lifting. Thank you for lifting. My head. Thank you for lifting. 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 My head. There are many ministers who struggle and struggle. They preach, they suffer, they go and do a lot of publicity. People come and get healed and go. They don't, these are four horns. The moment they pay your father's salary, everybody in the family starts becoming mysteriously sick without explanation until that one night I finish. You marry a man who was loving and caring, suddenly he becomes a Dracula. Four horns. night we have come under an apostolic and prophetic atmosphere to confront the gates of darkness are you hearing what i'm saying let me tell you satan can bow are you hearing me satan can bow you must get angry in your spirit don't just sit and watching others 
Forget about what is happening and concentrate. There's no space. Sit around. Find somewhere and sit. Tonight, when it's time to pray, I don't want to see you looking at me. Pack your wig, pack your wivon, keep it one side. We are going to pray this night. Hallelujah. He said, but these smiths or workmen have come to what? There are men that have been anointed to terrorize this horn. Are you saying that word? He said, see, he said, but these smiths, these carpenters have come to terrorize the horn. He didn't say, it's not just to defeat them, to terrorize them. There are people Satan is afraid of. See, Pastor Jakes made a statement. Look at me. Let me tell you something, brothers and sisters. There is this error in the body. There are two errors. One is the error of saying, see, everybody, I have the same access to God. Are you hearing me? I have the same access to God. There is nothing there. No man of God is special and this. Or the one that men of God make themselves semi-gods. Both are wrong. But let me tell you something clearly this night. Not every human being is a human being. The anointing has changed some people. The Bible says there are many bodies. Some are terrestrial. Some are celestial. They may look like you. The ability to recognize that difference is what will take you out of certain things. Are you hearing me? We are equal in Christ. But we are not equal in call and office and anointing. You must realize this. The Bible says there are some people that have been anointed to terrorize them and cause them to be panic stricken. Look at the horns that are terrorizing others. But the Bible says God calls some people and says, You, I just call you, come and become a terrorist. It's an election of grace. It's in your Bible. This is not error. It's not because they pray more. It is an office. an office to terrorize the works of darkness see let me tell you this night whatever power hear me i'm speaking under the unction of the lord whatever power that is responsible for holding any area of your life except god is not the god of heaven it must give up on you this night i said it must give up on you this night i don't care I speak under a prophetic and apostolic unction as one of these privileged carpenters. If I be sent of God, I speak to you. Every horn that is responsible for terrorizing your life, it will bow this night. He said, but I have sent carpenters. They are around, scattered over the earth. The only problem is that we have not trained our spirits to recognize them. Jesus went to certain cities, they saw him until he ascended to heaven and they said, is this the man that has been among us? See, let me tell you, one of the greatest revelation you have in this life is that some people have been called. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Is called an election of grace. I didn't call myself. See, let me tell you something. When the Lord showed me the vision for ministry, hear me. I was standing in a tower and I saw an endless sea of people very oppressed people messed up by Satan it was a whole generation of people and I saw them crying and while they came close I was hearing the sounds of their cry and they were blaming me in the vision and I said what is wrong and they said there is no food and no water suddenly it occurred to me that I was holding in my hands the keys to the storehouse that will feed that generation. This is a vision I had. Listen to me, please. 
Hallelujah. And when that happened, I told them who is the cause. Who is the reason why you are the way you are? And they said you are the one. Suddenly, compassion fell on me. And I said, I'm going to come out right now. I, I got to that tower. I was trying to hide from somebody. That was when I looked through the mirror and I saw that thing. It was fear and timidity that made me to run like Gideon to go and hide in the vision. But the people were telling me that we are dying here and you are the one who is holding the keys to the storehouse. They said no food and no water. These two things. Hallelujah. And I was determined that I was going to go out. The moment I opened the door, because I was afraid that I was alone. When I opened the door, there was a giant person that stood. And he said, hold my hands. We will go together. He's called the Holy Spirit. This is the whole idea behind the things we do with the Holy Spirit. People have criticized that we are emphasizing the... See, let me tell you. Every great vision comes under fire and criticism because people do not understand. The Bible says they know not. I'm taking time to explain to you. This call, there are people who have been called as carpenters. You may die in a place without recognizing because you see everybody and you think they are celestial or they are terrestrial. There are some people that certain graces have elected them. Hallelujah. In one other vision, I was in a whole city and I found out that all the hospitals and the clinics were closed. And I was crying because there were people that were sick. I said, what is all this? What is going on here? And I had a voice. He said, go and heal them. That was the end. So when people hear that HIV positive is changing to negative, or when people hear that genotypes are changing, rather than finding out, they keep criticizing and castigating. We don't announce any miracle here without verification. He said, But these smiths or these workmen have been sent to terrorize these homes. That's why their lives are not normal. They are not normal human beings. They don't live like normal human beings. Hallelujah. Many of you do not know the burden of carrying a prophetic agenda for a generation it will change you i don't have a social life i have lost many things that many people have you do not know what it means to come under the influence of a divine mandate i see a lot of people jumping and smiling i'm apostle i'm prophet i want to open ministry and i say oh dear Day and night you are under fire of all sorts. But he that endures to the end. Hallelujah. He said to cast out the horns or powers of the nations who have lifted their horn against the land of Judah to scatter it. There are horns, brothers and sisters, that are responsible for the way your father behaves, for the way your mother behaves, for the way your loved ones behave. You have tried counseling. You have tried psychology. It didn't work. They are called horns. But the Bible says, my head has thou exalted like the horn of a unicorn and you have anointed me with fresh oil. Hallelujah. Let's look at one more scripture. 1 Corinthians 6 verse 9. Hmm. Are you there? What did I say? 16, I'm sorry. 16 verse 9. Let's read together. It's projected. One to read. One to read it again. For a great door and effectual is open up to me. 
and there are many a great door is open the door of marriage has been opened the door of healing has been opened he said but there are how many But the Bible says, I have set before you an open door. He said, no man can shut it. And there are carpenters that have been sent to enforce that thing. Do you know what? Let me tell you something. We are not the only carpenters. You are here because you are one of those carpenters too. This is our mission. Our mission is not to become great men of God, but to make you a terrorist in the kingdom of darkness. See, it is not everyone hear me that is afraid of satan are you hearing me it's not everyone that is afraid of death it's not everyone that is afraid of sickness some people have seen how cheap satan is and he's aware hallelujah that knowledge comes through an understanding of the operation of the principles of the kingdom hallelujah there are many people who do not know listen i want to tell you something if you do not know the laws that govern the kingdom it can be costly are you hearing me longevity is not a mistake longevity is not a product of going to church there are kingdom principles that bring forth longevity divine health is not a mistake Divine health is not a product of the anointing. Divine health is from the body of Jesus. Are you hearing me? Anointing comes to get away the demon spirits that are responsible for bringing that. He said by his stripes. He didn't say by the oil. We have misapplied a lot of spiritual laws authority against witches and wizards is not the issue of uh -uh. there are kingdom principles and this is what we seek to share greatness does not happen by magic many of you are asking why is the devil disturbing me are you still asking that question when satan followed jesus to the wilderness was patient for one month and ten days until jesus finished fasting what makes you think that the devil will just look at you and say, Oh, I understand you are anointed. But it takes the power of the Holy Spirit to look at the devil eyeball to eyeball and say, I am one of those carpenters. <laughs> Hallelujah. There are some of you who don't sleep. When you close your eyes, you are oppressed. I was one of those people. The Bible says, a man of honor who does not know will die like a beast in the field. Tonight we have come to call the devil a liar. I've come to speak to you that there is an authority. There are seven things that redemption brings unto men. All of them must be at work in your life. The Bible says, worthy is the lamb to receive blessings, riches, honor. These are all the things he has received and he has given you. Seven. And it must be at work in your life. Hallelujah. Who are these horns? Who are these horns that have stood against little children? Who are these horns? You are aware of the testimony of the man who came here and who was healed. I think during one of the services or thereabout. He was sleeping in the night. Somebody appeared to him in a dream. Remember the story? with big syringe injected this man with hiv virus and he woke up physically with the virus that devil is a liar come on now years ago i used to pray for barren people and they were not healed they didn't give birth it disturbed me and i went back i said lord what what is it then the lord told me barrenness is not sickness it's an oppression it doesn't require healing there is a spirit. The spirits come and they create what we call fibroid. Fibroid is the baby of these spirits in the womb of people.
That's why women have miscarriages in the night. Why don't they have miscarriages in the daytime? But you are carpenters. See, I look forward to testimonies. Where will he, somebody will say, Ah, I healed the sick and I raised the dead. Not Pastor Jakes did this. Uh uh. You be the carpenters. You are not falling down for nothing. You are not falling down to prove we are anointed. God is in a serious business of working on you. Say, I'm one of the carpenters. Say it, I'm one of the carpenters. Yes, financial carpenters, apostolic carpenters. One of my life's goals is to break the back of poverty in the church. Is one of it. I hate the effect of poverty on many families. More ladies have entered prostitution. They didn't come to meet you. How much do you have? Many people have been messed up. There are some of you now. You want to marry. But you cannot get married. Because of the finance. And some of you are hoping. That one day. I will get a job of 10,000. And then I will get married. Calculate it. By your do you to judge. But when those that God has sent to bless you, they can come in one day. He said, your gate shall be continually open to receive the forces of the Gentiles. Do you believe this? You are going to get angry this night. This night we are going to pray. I am just sharing with you scriptures. The Bible says, Daniel, in chapter 10, remember? How that Daniel was praying and fasting. Wanting to get an understanding. And the Bible says the moment is there from the very first day. Daniel 10. You start reading from verse 5 down to 11 verse 1. When he was coming, the Bible says the prince of Persia. Withstood the angel 20 and 1 day. The prince of Persia withstood him. Hallelujah. The prince of Persia withstood him. Until he kept praying. The moment that embargo was lifted, the angel said, Now I am come to give thee understanding. One of the chief princes came to help. Tonight there is divine backing of the angelic. As we pray, there will be things happening in the realm of the spirit. Yokes of darkness that will be broken. This is pre-miracle service. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus, there is power. In the name of Jesus, to break every chain, to break every chain, to break every chain. That's what God will do tonight. To break every chain, to break every chain, to break every chain. Sing it one more time. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. To break every chain, to break every chain. I've shared it here. Before we start Koinonia, listen, I realize that there is a secret to increase and growth. 
And I knew that there were powers over territory that kept ministries down. I've shared this again. From the roundabout of Chiki Republic, I started walking there till aviation, commanding the forces to bow. Commanding principalities and power. And then the city opens up. Before I go for administration in any city, I speak to the principalities. They know my voice. See, let me teach you something. There are principalities. There are powers. There are rulers. There are spiritual wickedness in heavenly places. These are different strata of, of darkness. But the Bible says you have been exalted above thrones, dominions, and every name that is named. Both in this realm, this world, and in the world to come. So you command them to bow. Hallelujah. As our prayer department begins to pray, they speak over the week and an open heavens. And you are there in your house. You don't even know what carries you from your house. You are still complaining and insulting us, yet you are coming because the heavens are open. There's an army rising up. You are that prophetic army. There's an army Rising up, I tell you, you are that army. There's an army rising up to break every chain, to break every chain, to break every chain. Tonight, every one of you is going to represent not just yourself, but even your families. Hear me. Your families have been praying for a savior. Say, we can't die like this. And God said, come for koinonia. You, you, let God find a carpenter. Hallelujah. I just came, today I just came, I've been at home. I needed to go and visit the house. As soon as I stepped in, in the night, that night as I slept, in a dream, the Lord showed me everything that was wrong. And I got up the next day while they were sleeping. Hallelujah. I got anointing oil, poured it inside water and carried the bucket. I took my bare foot and I was walking around and I was commanding the forces in that territory to bow. I said an ambassador is in town. This is what we are teaching you. Hallelujah. An ambassador is in town. I went and looked at my mother's poultry. I said, I command increase. See, if you know the office that you stand in in Christ, you will not take it for granted. The Bible says, as I hear you say before my ears, so will I do. Realize you are not ordinary. You are not the one looking for help. And if there is any need for help, we will grant you the help here by the grace of God and empower you to go back. When you see things that are not working, rejoice because you are here. You carry the backing of heaven. Your job is to legislate. Your job is to legislate. The Bible says he confirmed the words of his messengers. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord ambassador you must realize this so that you don't just stand at home or in your offices everything that is going wrong start blaming yourself and say now everybody's lamenting if there is nobody i am an ambassador say it i'm an ambassador You're an ambassador this is why god is bringing you and you are going to pray as you pray first for yourself and then through the fire of the Holy Ghost, you will dislodge powers over your life. And then you will see testimonies rolling in. Suddenly you will find out that certain insights you have been struggling to get. Suddenly there is an open heaven. Your ministry or your fellowship takes another level as if Satan does not exist. Hallelujah. Nobody ever came to Jesus Christ. Hear me. 
after he went 40 days and 40 nights, Satan came to withstand him because Jesus wanted to come to the people like Paul, but Satan withstood him. When he defeated Satan, suddenly on the mountain, people started coming. Along the water side, people said, what happened? Powers were dislodged. This night, hear me, you are not praying for healing. You are confronting the gates of darkness. Rise up on your feet, everybody. Rise up on your feet. Listen. 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 I want you to know that heaven is backing you tonight. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Say, heaven is backing me. Say, it, heaven is backing me. Because we are going to pray now. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, I tell you, there will be an eruption of testimonies. After this night's meeting, you will know that the things that have been happening around your life and your family, they are not as ordinary as they look. You are the Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. You are the Holy Ghost. Take your place. Take your place. number one hallelujah you're going to pray and say in the name of Jesus I confront gates that are stopping the finances the finances grace that are making your family members not to be tighters grace that are making them not to be givers lift your voice Financial case. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please hold on. This prayer must be serious this night. Please let's have two of our school of ministry students, two prayer band. Benga, come. Kenny, come. Go on one of the mic. Our school of ministry students, where are you? Are you not? Tolu, come. Quickly, two, three. Well, you, it's okay. You push, go and share the mic. Stand behind. When I say pray, if you are not praying, you will go back to your seat. You are not out for jamboree. We are going to pray. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You are going to pray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Four horns. There are four prayer points we have. The Bible says they were sent to one. This finance thing, you are going to pray it. Lift your voice and pray.
The Bible says there is no man, hear me, that will enter into a man's life and, and spoil the good except he first find the strong man. He said, and I will give you the keys of it. Hallelujah. Hear me. Many of us will be surprised what will happen this night. Prayer point number two. You are going to declare and say, Satan, the Bible says through the greatness of thy power, right now, I command those forces bow. Lift your voice and pray. Bow. Bow. Principalities, bow. Oh, my God. 
says when you catch a thief listen please when a thief steals your property and you catch that thief he won't bring back what he stole he said he will restore sevenfold this is what the bible says sevenfold you're going to pray see listen the lord is showing me in i'm in a vision right now and the lord is showing me angels holding baskets hear me but the baskets are empty. Listen. Say good. Please follow me. <laughs> there is a prophetic atmosphere here. There are empty baskets. And I'm wondering, and the Lord is ministering to me. He's saying this basket will be full of the blessings that are due God's people. See? Si hear me? Si he said, and I will restore. Si hear me? Canker worms can si eat years of si people's life. So you are growing older. But nothing is happening. But this night, hey! I don't know about you, but I came to Koinonia. I'm placing a demand. Everything hey! you know, Satan took. I'd like you to call it back and say, Restore. something Rest to me. We are still praying on the third point. Rest the Lord said Rest we should call back opportunities Rest that were either missed or wasted. Rest are you hearing me? There are some of you, some circles came into your life. Rest either by carelessness it passed. Let me tell you, Rest it's on. only in this realm that you count time. In the realm of the spirit, you can call time back. Hear me? I don't care what opportunity you missed. Restore. Whether it was an opportunity for marriage, Restore. for job, Restore. right now, I want you to call back Restore. that opportunity. It will come back. Yes. Yes. Let's <laughs> go. 
Satan is until you engage in prayer. Satan will keep opening his eyes until you pray. When you pray, the devil will shrink and you will see how powerless he is. Hallelujah. Now, one last prayer point. We'll add one more. You are going to confront the gates over your family. See, don't let anybody fool you that there are no gates. Let me tell you something. Some of you are the last card that God has to use over your family. If you don't do anything about it, don't think God brought you here just to waste your time. Listen. See me. Listen, listen. If you truly love your family members, effectual prayer is not just by shouting. It is the seriousness. Put your heart in this prayer. Many of you, as you pray, you will begin to see vision. See, hear me. Listen, let me tell you something. Listen, listen. I, see, we don't kill people in this place. But let me tell you, God is a God of mercy, but he's a God of judgment. Are you hearing what I'm saying? There are certain horns. We don't care who these horns are. Unfortunately, sometimes... As this power is taking some human beings become victims. We don't kill people. But whatever it will take for the glory of your family to rise, you will pray it is that. Lift your voice. I'm 
I will not let you go. And the Bible says, when he touched his thigh, he said, What is your name? He said, Jacob, which means a cheat and a supplanter. He said, You are called Israel. For as a prince, you have fought with God and prevailed. And the Bible says, Hear me. He says, And the sun rose and he called that place Peniel. Hallelujah. I've told you as much, hear me. I've told you as much as possible. Please invite your loved ones for the miracle service. You don't hear me talk like this. We are only responding to the things that the Holy Spirit, if they refuse, no problem. For God will do a work in this place. Hallelujah. We'll take one more prayer point. Hallelujah. We are going to pray for this ministry. Hear me. I'm like a pregnant woman right now. Because I know when we step into seasons. God has his way. In the last three to four months. That's why you find out that you don't find me outside. I have been praying and preparing birthing new and mighty things in the spirit. We are stepping into a dimension. See for when you are faithful with what God gives you. He said he measured a thousand cubits and it was to the ankle. And when he saw that you were faithful he measured a thousand cubits. Many of you are already sensing that there are newer levels of grace. You can see that the unction upon the house is not what it used to be. This is ushering season. For when God wants to bless you, he will first increase the anointing, then enlarge your sphere of influence. You have taken all the glory. You have taken all the praise. You have taken all dominion. You have taken all the praise. You have made. Hallelujah. If you love this ministry, I'd like you in the next few minutes to pray your life out. Listen, you're going to pray for the ministers. See the way ministers are falling around like leaves. Immorality, all kinds of things. I've said it, any man can fall from any height. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And if you love us, pray for us. Pray for us. We are going to pray for this ministry. We are going to say, Lord, let a dimension of grace, hear me, hear the prayer point, and fire spread from this place and around this nation. God is already doing great things through our teachings. I cannot describe to you what is happening around. The media can tell you best the mighty and terrible things that God is doing. Some of you have gone back and you have become mighty agents of change. Even you, you are surprised at yourself. This is what we are training you to become. And hear me, when you are praying for the ministry, you are praying for yourself. The ministry is not Joshua Selman. 
Are you hearing what I'm saying? You're going to say, Lord, together as a family, nobody will rise and leave another. Are you hearing me? There will not be a few men of God rising, growing in grace. Hear me? There are certain things God has given us as a ministry. Number one is the presence of God. Number two is the anointing of the Holy Spirit. The love of God. God has given us influence. God has given us prosperity. We are going to pray that the strongholds that attempt to raise their heads, listen, there will never come a time where we will not have testimonies here. The vision must speak. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You are going to command and say every force that will want to stop the vision from speaking, it will speak in your own life. It will speak. If truly God has called us, something should come upon your life that you will become epistles of the vision. Lift your voice and pray for ear. <laughs> of the ministry our school of ministry God is raising mighty mighty men of power in all spheres not just ministry you're going to pray for our students you're going to pray for the missions hallelujah you're going to pray for koinonia you're going to pray for all of the things that we are doing you're going to say Lord not one sick body will come and not be healed not one oppressed person you're going to pray for grace to stand criticism grace to stand persecution grace to remain faithful grace to remain faithful grace to remain humble
Hallelujah. I want to do something prophetic this night. Hallelujah. One of the things God has given us is the spirit of dominion. You know what dominion is? Dominion means to legislate the counsel of God in any sphere, Satan notwithstanding. And among the many things that will happen to you tonight, I'm going to pray for you. That everything we stand for, your life must represent it. See, if you do not represent what we stand for, we are fake. It means we are lying. It means we are faking power somewhere. If we are healing the sick, you should heal the sick. You must not be in ministry. If we are humble and you are arrogant, there is something wrong with the transference of spirits. Hallelujah. I want to pray for you. I want you to believe, my brothers. Believe. Hallelujah. Lift your hands. Please be careful with the fans. Father, you didn't send us to waste people's time. You didn't send us to be noisemakers. My God, I am praying this night. Every power, every force against any area of your life, this night, if I be sent as a servant of God, if God has ordained us as one of these carpenters, I pray right now, those powers bow. 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 Every power hindering your marriage in this place, hear me, or the marriage of your loved ones, this night, I release you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Everything stopping your breakthrough. Breakthrough. As surely as the God of heaven lives. Between this night and next Friday, I command unbelievable breakthrough. Amen. Receive it. Receive it. I invoke it from the heavens with the backing of Elohim. Hallelujah. Amen. Listen. Every close heaven in this place, whether it's as a result of non tithing or mistakes or whatever i don't care what is responsible every heaven that is closed in this place right now this night i pray let the heavens be open over you let the heavens be open over you let the heavens be open over you Hallelujah. This month, there are three things I'm speaking into your life now. Listen. Number one is authentic unction. Listen. Number two is favor that you cannot imagine. Listen. Number three is honor. Receive these three fold blessings. Receive it. Receive power. Power to heal the sick. Power to cast out devils. Amen. 
hear me in the name that is above all names whatever bows to us here let it bow to you in the name of the lord jesus whatever answers to us let it answer to you in the name of jesus christ hallelujah hallelujah i want to pray for your family hear me enough is enough this night lift your hands super super your families will never believe you or the god you serve until there is an evidence i pray my god that evidence of breakthrough that will compel families to know that you are at work let there be a release now let there be a release now let the angel of the lord go across every state every city i instruct it every city saria abuja lagos calabar conquiste just angels in the name of jesus go and confirm breakthroughs go and confirm breakthroughs go and confirm breakthroughs give testimonies 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 so that they will know that your god is alive hallelujah hallelujah the lord is instructing me to do something dangerous please take off your shoes and stand on your feet this is not diabolic please don't go and start criticizing us and talking nonsense Listen, something will come upon your life this night. Please listen. Listen. I don't do stupid things just because people are doing I don't have no. The Bible says, hear me. It says, anywhere the sole of your feet treads upon, it has been given to you. I want to pray, hear me. Many of you do not know the mystery of what is happening, but I want you to believe. You will be amazed. Because I see an angel of the Lord, pure red from head to toe. Never seen, listen, I've never seen this angel of the Lord. And this is what he was telling me. That there is an impartation and a transference. Hear me? The influence we enjoy as a ministry is not a mistake. Are you hearing me? God has honored us and taken us to where we cannot merit. I want it to come upon your life this night. Lift your hands. Many of you will receive mighty impartations. Hear me. You will see things answering. See, your Christianity will have results. Father, I stand as your servant tonight under the instruction that you have given me my god there is a spirit upon this ministry an operation of the holy ghost the operation of dominion and inexplainable influence at the count of three my god let every feet upon this ground receive that anointing and demonstrate it practically Thank you, Father. One, two, three. Receive it. Take 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 it. Receive it. The spirit of dominion. The action of kingdom influence. Let the ground open up for you. Let the ground open up for you. Let the earth answer to you. Aya, 
One more prayer. God has given us inexplainable kingdom wealth and prosperity. Please lift your hands. You need it. I honestly want to pray from my heart that your financial heavens will be open in a way. And I'm going to pray. My God and my King, I pray. In the name that is above all names, you have called and you have sent me. Lord, if I be your servant, at the count of three, let an unction of inexplainable wealth, let it come upon your people at the count of three. One, two, three. Take it. Take it. Take it! Take it! A mantle of prosperity! A mantle of wealth! A mantle of finance! Do, do mighty things for the kingdom! To feed the hungry! To clothe the poor! Wipe the tears from your family. Let this anointing bring you ideas. Let it bring you opportunities. Hallelujah. put back your shoes thank you Jesus give him thanks yes I see a mighty open heavens mighty mighty open heavens Jesus we give you thanks Jesus we give you thanks you have not called the seed of Jacob to seek you again give him thanks I assure you as surely as the Lord lives your testimonies begin right now Anyone under the sound of my voice who is sick in your body, whether blood disease, fibroid, lump in your breast, in the name that is above all names, we change genotypes now. SS be changed to AA now. AS be changed to AA now. My green headaches go in the name of Jesus. Demonic manifestations go now in the name of Jesus. Lump in the breast disappear now. Appendicitis go now. Every kind of infirmity, if it has a name, I command it to bow now. You will return with testimonies. HIV be healed now. Every dead virus, every virus that brings death in your body, I curse it, it dies now. Hepatitis A, B, and C go forever now. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. 
hear me I want to give some people an opportunity right now to make a decision for the Lord Jesus Christ the number one vision that we have please keep standing don't sit down yet please please I know you've tried we need to make this great call the Bible says, And they that be wise shall shine like the firmament of the heavens. And they that turn many to righteousness as the stars even forevermore. I want to give you an opportunity right now. There are many of you, some of you are coming for the first time. Some of you have been coming, but you have never made a genuine decision for the Lord Jesus Christ. Listen, it all starts with a decision to come back home. We do not condemn you. It doesn't matter what you have done. Some of you have given your heart to the Lord but you have found yourself derailing in a path that is not of God. Right now, it's our joy to welcome you home and for you to start an authentic Christian journey that will produce results. God desires to make you an ambassador. Some of you, your coming out is going to begin to be the beginning of salvation in your family. Right now, while everybody is standing, I want you to leave your seat and begin to come right now. Those who need to rededicate their hearts and those who are giving their lives. Don't wait for anybody to come. You are the first to come. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you. Come and stand. God bless you. Young, old, come and stand. Don't be emotional about it. This is a very serious decision. God bless you. Come from everywhere. Outside, inside. Please, don't let the devil take advantage of your life. Don't let the devil take advantage of your life. God is giving you an opportunity to make a lasting decision. Leave your seat. Don't allow your friend or your family member come and stop you. Thank you, Jesus. If you are still coming, keep coming. Keep coming. Keep coming. Keep coming. Don't let the devil tell you it's too late. Keep coming. Keep coming. Tonight is the night for an authentic decision. Tonight is the night for an authentic decision. Don't be afraid of anybody. Don't be ashamed of anybody. Hallelujah. The Bible says, as many who come to him, he will in no wise cast away. Some of you are making the decision for the Lord Jesus Christ for the first time. Some of you are born again. You love God but you found yourself derailing and you want to mean business with God tonight. It doesn't matter which of the groups. I want to welcome you. We're family here. We love you. We believe in your future and what God has to do in your life. Hallelujah. God brought you here because he wants to give you a new beginning. Lift your right hand and say this prayer after me from the depths of your heart. It's not a special number. Mean it from your heart. Say after me, Lord Jesus, I love you with all my heart. And I come before you tonight, unable to help myself. I have heard your word, and this night, I make Jesus Lord of my life. Forgive me my sins. I receive remission of sins. I receive eternal life into my spirit. From today, I'm saved. I'm a child of God. Holy Spirit, come and fill me. Build me. Make me an ambassador for the kingdom. Empower me to live the victorious Christian life. In the name of Jesus. Amen. I salute you for making this great decision. This is the greatest miracle that has happened in this place. Now you'll be having a word with Pastor Jakes. He's going to be meeting with you personally. He'll be following you up. Please and please, as much as possible, I want you to be part of... I want you to be part of this and make sure that you show up Wednesday by 4 please tomorrow by 4 you have a meeting with Pastor Jakes the venue is at the Chapel of Redemption just the book stand closed please those of you who invited them remind them and let them come hallelujah praise the Lord the Lord increase you the Lord bless you please follow the ushers they will have your details God bless you appreciate them just follow the ushers. God bless you. God bless you. Hallelujah. In a few minutes, we'll be out of here. This is your first time of worshiping with us in Koinonia. We love you. We appreciate you. We celebrate you. 
we want to honor you please i'd like you to leave your seat and come out gloriously and honorably we want to pray for you god bless you please leave your seat wherever you are inside or outside if there's a new person who is sitting push the person and tell him i love you too much i love you too much hallelujah keep clapping koinonia this is not your best thank you the lord brought them for those of you who have made it a point of duty to invite people to get blessed may the lord invite your destiny help us into your life again and again in the name of jesus christ hallelujah praise the lord thank you so much i appreciate all of you we celebrate you the lord honor and increase you hallelujah this is koinonia a meeting put together by eternity network international i believe you are blessed tonight you will go back with unending testimonies you will be amazed hallelujah i pray that the lord will bless you we want to pray and prophesy into your life we are anointed people and whatever we call you you become hallelujah praise the lord saints of god stretch your hands and speak those words you are anointed every word you speak the bible says whatsoever name adam called them that was the name they were go ahead and prophesy declare we call you blessed we bless you with a hunger for the spirit we bless you with a hunger for prayer and the word of God. We pray that the Lord will equip you and make you a giant in the spirit. Every habit, everything that does not represent Christ in your life leaves you right now. You return as a sign and a wonder. Things will begin to fall in their place in your life. You will become a testimony even to yourself. Thank you, Jesus. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Hallelujah. Thank you once again. We love you. We honor you. Please just follow the ushers. They will greet you more warmly on our behalf. And they will give you a few informations. God bless you. Please just turn back. You have the ushers. Bless you. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. I want you to keep doing something for this man of God, our man of God, Apostle Joshua Salmon. And that is, I want you to keep on praying for him, that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him, that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of Jesus Christ, and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of Christianity. And then, don't forget to like this video don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing jesus i'll see you again bye